Ah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The heroes with hard shells, but soft and squishy innards. Have you ever had turtle soup? I have. And I didn't much like it. I still ate, slurped, and drank the lot because, well, I paid for it and I needed to fill my belly, but it wasn't the fine dining experience that I was promised. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Chris, this whimsical intro is going to be turned around so that you can say that Shredder's Revenge is the turtle soup of games. It fills you up, but doesn't taste great. Please, I wouldn't be so obvious. No, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge is certified goodness, and unlike the questionable bowl of turtle chow, I would gladly take a second helping. Okay, abstract food analogies out of the way, let's get down to the nitty and the gritty. If you're old enough to remember begging mum and dad for coins so that you could dump them in a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade cabinet, well first, well done for making it this far, old chap, you'll get pangs of nostalgia before you've even kicked your first foot soldier through the Channel 6 newsroom. The game begins with the GOAT cartoon theme song, which for me instantly rolled back the years and made me momentarily forget that the world is not doing so great. For those 60 seconds of 80s tunage, the world didn't matter. I was six years old again, ready to hunker down again with a bag of opal fruits, they're called Starburst these days, and a worn out VHS full of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoons. Sadly, there are not any actual episodes bundled in, and that would have been a hell of a treat, but the game is structured to feel like a season of the show. I say that because that's what the developers said pre-release, but really, it doesn't feel like playing through a season at all. Sure, the levels are broken up into 16 episodes, and there's a loose story which sees the awesome foursome, plus Master Splinter, April, and an extra unlockable character, smashing their way through familiar locations as they chase down Krang and his scattered robot body. But that's about it. There's very little dialogue between the levels, just static animations with a sliver of exposition. I didn't find them particularly interesting, so my co-op buddy and I were grateful for the option to skip them. Speaking of co-op, you can either roll solo or play co-op with up to six players on one screen. I played through the entire story mode with my go-to co-op buddy, my six-year-old son, Charlie. He's a solid player, a real crack shot in Warzone. Don't tell his mum, or social services. For me, two-player was hectic enough, never mind having six heroes darting their way around the screen. It can get very busy, and I lost myself often enough with just the two of us playing, so I can't imagine the visual chaos that would come with six players. Still, it's better to have the option than not, but I wouldn't do it myself. Given that Shredder's Revenge is essentially a modern arcade beat-em-up, but without the predatory, coin-sucking tendencies of an actual arcade game, it's fairly simple to play. And, unlike those penny-pinching cabinets, Shredder's Revenge has three difficulty options. Chill, OK, and Gnarly. Which is great for those of us who just like to sit back, bash some buttons, and feel good for a little while. For this review, Charlie and I played on easy mode after I suggested we try Gnarly, but he said, Daddy, chill. Despite being super accessible to all with just two attack buttons, a jump button, and the life-saving dodge move, it's not without depth or challenge. If you really want to feel the cold sweat of running on your last life, you can knock up the difficulty or try out the arcade mode, where game over actually means game over, not just start the level again and again until you cheese your way to the end. There's depth to the combat too, if you go looking for it. Thankfully, it's not hard to find. Just jump in the menus and you'll find a move list. I was surprised to find that the list had over 20 commands. I was less surprised to find that I forgot most of them by the time I unpaused the game. For me, simple button mashing and abusing the power move is enough, or at least enough to limp through to the end of the game after a couple of game overs. Yeah, even on easy mode, we got our asses handed to us, especially on some of the later stages, with the environmental hazards and the tricky to beat enemies. I do have an easy out though, it was all Charlie's fault. There's a trend among developers these days to cram in RPG light systems where they aren't really needed to pad out their games. 
Sometimes it works. A lot of the time, I see right through it for what it is. A cheap way to offer a sense of progress. Because gamers love nothing more than seeing numbers go up. Shredder's Revenge bucks the trend by having upgrades that are automatically doled out through play. You have no say in what upgrades you get. You just play the game and, over time, your character's power level increases, with each new level giving you a HP boost or a new variation of the power move. This suited me down to the ground, because less time spent in games menus means more time in the game's wonderfully drawn levels. And they really are well done. Charlie did not have the same appreciation, calling the graphics bad, but that's because he never lived through the times where bugs were features, and the third dimension was a dirty fantasy. I must admit, I am a little loose on my love for the good old days when it comes to retro graphics, but I still managed to pick up what Shredder's Revenge was putting down. Every level was crammed with detail, little jokes, and enough nostalgia to make an old man yell, Cowabunga dude, after every successful boss battle. The music stood out too, and I normally don't pay much notice to music in games unless, well, it's a music game but the variations of the familiar theme song were really well done, and done well enough to catch my attention and infect me with the earworm that has caused me to hum the theme song just about everywhere, much to the annoyance of all who don't like fun. As a fan of the original arcade coin sucker, I can say that Shredder's Revenge hits the right notes in just about all departments. However, modern gamers who didn't grow up with cartridges that needed a good blow and a bang might find the admittedly simple and one-direction gameplay a bit too basic, by today's standards at least. Basically, if you've used a VHS player in real life, you'll get what Shredder's Revenge is all about. But if you've never touched a floppy disk, I had to be really careful saying that, you might get bored of button bashing by episode 6. And that's the end of our review. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you did, go on and hit the like and subscribe buttons so that you don't miss our future videos. And if you're feeling particularly sociable, leave a comment and let us know how you found the game. Did you beat it? Did you play in six player mode? If you did, was it that I saw that I imagined it could be? Let me know. I've been Chris, you've been gorgeous, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, cowabunga dudes. No, I'm, I'm too old to be saying that, I'm too old. I'm too old. Mm-mm.